everyone. Welcome to the Dishes and Dimes podcast. Uh, today is a very special episode because it is the inaugural show um, in collaboration with Basketball News. Um, every Tuesday at 7 p.m., you can catch us live uh, streaming, um, basically the same selection of your hosts that you're familiar with. Um, and today, for the very first episode, fittingly enough, we have Alex Kennedy, um, Chief Content Officer for BasketballNews.com, our colleague. Um, first of all, thank you so much for showing up <laughs> and for taking on the uh, pressure of being the very first guest of the show. Um, thank you, Amy. I appreciate it. Awesome. Um, so, interestingly enough, like we like uh, the off season uh, typically um, is full of um, things that are newsworthy, but. Uh, in this particular off season, um, I guess we were uh, the idea was that it would be not as eventful as it usually is. But um, I feel like a few things have happened already, so we all have plenty of talk to to talk about tonight. So um, to begin, um, let us just familiarize you guys with the format of the show. Um, it's going to be yeah t- similar to the podcast itself, um, not too different. We're probably going to um, discuss things that we see more relevantly. Like, I feel like, I don't know if you guys have noticed because you guys host podcasts as well, but after seven days, the things that you found interesting on like day one, two, and three are completely irrelevant by the time you're recording on a Sunday. So um, hopefully this will allow us to um, talk about things as they happen more, um, you know, relevantly. So um, let's begin. (laughs) <laughs> firstly, sorry, I'm like reading things as I do this. We're um, firstly, I'm reading it out. You're reading yeah. it. Oh, good. We're, gonna get, we're, you know, we're getting gonna adjusted. Here. Sorry, First guys. One. Exactly. Next um, episode will be professional. Just bear with us. <laughs> so uh, to begin, um, Chief Content Officer, do you want to give you give us um, a rundown of your job at Basketball News, your responsibilities? Um, and also, how's, how has it been so far? Because it's like in its infancy, it's just beginning, it's just starting out. Um, and I feel like you guys have gone like full steam ahead <laughs> in terms of the production and the content. Um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I can only see you guys going up from here. But yeah, give us an um, idea of what your job entails. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been very busy, but uh, it, it's, it's been great. Um, basically, I edit a lot of the content that goes on the site. Spencer Davies helps me as well. He's kind of my other editor that chips in. Um, but yeah, we our, our whole thing was when we kind of started basketballnews.com was we wanted to have an amazing staff that had journalists, that had you know current and former players. So we really went out and made a ton of hires. I mean, and I got to give credit to the bosses, you know, Chad Horseman, Scott Hale, those guys really gave us the resources to be able to build a, a really cool team. And, you know, you guys were one of the additions that I was so excited about being able to acquire your podcast and then now to be able to do this too, you know, Dishes and Dimes Live. So, yeah, I mean, it's been great. We've been bringing on different players like Kenyon Martin, Vinny Del Negro, uh, Etan Thomas, James Posey, Troy Brown Jr. We have one or two others that should be joining very soon, which we're excited about. And then, yeah, great journalists too. We've had a lot of different writers and podcasts come on and then we've acquired some existing podcasts like this one so it's been so much fun you know every day there's not enough hours in the day to get everything done so it's been uh interesting uh and a bit overwhelming but i wouldn't you know trade it it's, it's been it's a ton of fun i mean i feel like I, I told scott this uh who you got you guys you know know scott you worked with him um i feel like i'm an nba gm that was given just a ton of cap space and they said go build whatever <laughs> so i was able to you know bring in a bunch of cool people so it's been great now that's an apt comparison. That's actually, um, yeah, that's a really funny way. Yeah, to that was perfect. <laughs> um, so, is it weird being asked about your job? <laughs> yeah, but say if you work, <laughs> it always feels weird whenever I'm on like the other side of interviews already, and yeah. then to be talking about like my job, my day to day, which is it, it, it is it does feel weird. Uh, it also feels weird to be doing this and not be on here for like three hours while watching an NBA Finals game because we're doing <laughs> yeah. and, True. You know, we had like a million people in there and we were on for so long. But we're uh, watching the like this is as much as we watched the game. Like there was yeah, no yeah, game watching <laughs> at all during those. It was really fun though. <laughs> we we, um, we would like just periodically check the score and be like, oh damn, they're down thirty. <laughs> yeah, back to the conversation. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> David must be telling us what's happening in the fourth quarter and we'd be like. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's halftime. Um, 
Uh, so uh, not not just because you're here. I just want to say, like, basketball news, the content that's being put out right now is actually top notch. Like, for something that's just begun, I like it's a go to place for me right now. It's impressive, yeah. It, it's mm-hmm. incredibly impressive. Just the work that you've done, the work that Scott and everybody at the team has done, just to compile such a great group of people, us. But not only <laughs> us, but everybody else as well, because the content is 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 top notch. I'm so happy with our guys. You know, everyone we have on our staff, um, I say guys, but I mean everyone, ladies too. You guys are crushing it. Honestly, you guys have been <laughs> maybe the best podcast so far. I'm not going to lie. You know, as far as. Oh, my God. Uh, stop it. it. Really, you guys are, are crushing it. And you guys, I have to say, your, your audience is extremely loyal too, which is really cool. Like, you guys have built something really cool. And I think. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's hard to do. It's not easy. Uh, and, and you guys are still relatively new to it, which is like so impressive that in such a short period of time, you guys have been able to build this up and have this kind of following. And it's just really cool. So I, I got to give you guys credit too, but yeah, I've been so happy. The content that our team is putting out, I, I, I agree. I think it's top notch and I, I'm not saying that because I, you know, edit it or sign it or whatever. You just <laughs> have really cool people doing really cool things. And I, I'm super proud of our team. And I've said this before, like, you know, we're not obviously getting the recognition of some of the other websites and we're not, you know, we're brand new. So we're trying to just get our name out there at this point. But, you know, I wish more people were seeing the site so they could see the cool stuff that we're doing because we have a bunch of great writers, podcasters, former players that are doing really cool things. So it will continue to grow. I mean, our whole thing is just put out cool stuff and people will find it and they'll enjoy it. And, you know, we're trying our best to, you know, come up with different ideas too, like this, for example, or the watch parties and just different things that we can do throughout a season or off season to kind of keep people entertained. So it's been a ton of fun, really. I, I can't, uh, I can't stress that enough. I've had a great time with it. Um, before we move on, are there any recent pieces that you have written or any um, interviews or interesting things you anticipate that you want to share? Yeah. So good question. So uh, we have just tons of stuff right now. Uh, we have draft prospect interviews that I'm really uh proud about. You know, we have a lot of those coming out. Uh, there's a few on the site right now by Matt Babcock, and then we'll have another one each week up until the draft. So a bunch of first round prospects and stuff, have, you know, we've been talking with them. Um, we also have Spencer Davies. He's been doing a fantastic job. He did a free agent raking piece. So I think we're all kind of shifting into off season free agent mode at this point. So he's done a great job. He not only did a top 10 free agent list, but he went position by position and did the top 10 uh, free agents at each position. So that was great. Nikaias Duncan has been crushing it. Uh, you guys know Nikaias. I know he was on here before. Um, he, his film breakdowns are fantastic. I feel like I learned so much when I read his stuff. Um, so he's been fantastic. He's He did a piece the other day breaking down possible trade destinations for Victor Oladipo. Uh, and then one thing I would just stress is all of the podcasts. You know, like I said, you guys do a great job. James Posey's The Pose Cast has been great. He's had guests like Ray Allen, John Lucas, Antoine Walker. He has a bunch of other big name guests coming soon. Um, I have my podcast, the Alex Sandy podcast, and actually I haven't tweeted this or anything like that, but I just had Gary Union on. So that episode will go up tonight. So it's been great. I mean, I would just say the podcasts, uh, check those out. And then, yeah, we've had a lot of great articles recently, which has been a lot of fun. So, um, before we actually start talking about the NBA, um, uh, I want to just I mention, <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to plug last week's plug. episode. I was just going to say, for everyone who's watching this, please check out the Bison Dele uh, podcast that I and Sidra record, uh, me and Sidra recorded together. It's on Patreon. It's it's exclusive there. It is his entire story. It was a lot of, it was really interesting. He's probably the most interesting NBA player, former NBA player that I've ever done any amount of research on and so it's like a no like he, he's such an interesting guy like it's not saying anything about any other NBA player I'm just saying he's a very interesting person and um I, I share his story there and I think it's uh, a really good listen so check that out oh Iman and is such too. a good storyteller like you guys you guys haven't listened to it you need to listen to it fgh like I just like I'm all over the place but I'm kind of all over the place so it worked I thought that's a really good idea I love that yeah for those who don't know like for the month of October uh, sorry, I just have to mention because oh, yeah. uh, she's done such a great, great job. She has like this theme that she's doing. I know she's too modest to say it, so I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where yeah. she's basically just doing like a Crime Junkies-esque um, review of like, you know, NBA cold cases. I for the month. Say, you said for the month of October. I am extending yeah. it because the amount of research it takes. So it's yeah. a lot. So I'm going to extend it. You know, there's lots of time during the off season, but I um, have a really uh, exciting one that's 
going to be on the Dishes and Dimes account. It's not going to be a Patreon exclusive. It's going to be a Halloween episode. I'm really, really excited about that one as well. You should think about narrating, Iman. Like, you have that Morgan Freeman woman side of the voice. <laughs> it's, it's just so perfect. It's, it's just like, you're like, ooh, tell me more. So what yeah. else is there? You know, I don't have a high pit. Like, I've been told that I should be <laughs> no. in and Disney characters. And you're like, no, Morgan Freeman. You're like, take it. I'll do it with your, with your Pascal Siakam rant over the, the uh, like, I, it wasn't, well, I forget what beat it was over, but uh, that was, that was incredible. Drone, oh, I remember thank that. Thank you for that, yeah. That was, <laughs> Once it gets rolling, you got to just get out of the way and listen. <laughs> yeah, honestly, we were just vibing in the back. We're like, yeah, you yeah. Got yeah. go, Do you guys remember? Did I remember you know Kelsey's rant where she was like, "Yeah, that was so yeah, Reggie Miller one." Page flip, no, where she no. literally turned a she page because she was reading. <laughs> she turned a page halfway through the rant. It was perfect. Uh, but like, Dishes and Dimes been so great because I think I just go on Twitter rants like all of the time, and now I don't have to type. I can just get in front of a microphone and yell it out. So it's been a lot of fun, and we're nice so thankful for, for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you guys ready to talk NBA? Yeah. list. I'm just kidding. Right <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys up to tonight? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, like, like as I was saying, um, with this offseason, um, even though it hasn't really gotten rolling, free agency hasn't even begun yet. Um, a few things have already happened. I think the main thing with the entirety of the season, not just this offseason so far, but um, has been the just countless coaching changes <laughs> throughout the league. Um, there are teams that still don't have coaches right now, head coaches. I know the Pelicans don't have a coach. Uh, the Rockets don't have a coach right now, which is nuts because um, Tillman sounds like he does not want to go into rebuild. So if he plans on contending anytime soon, he should probably have a head coach secured already, um, considering that, you know, the Pacers have gone ahead and done it already. The uh, Nets have gone ahead and done it. So um who knows what's happening there. But uh, I know you told me, Alex, that uh, you recently spent some time with the Pacers front office back in January. Um, and it's, you know, perfectly timed because today they hired uh, Nate uh, Bjorkren from the Toronto Raptors bench, head co head assistant coach of the Toronto Raptors. But from what I understand, um, I didn't know this, but the Raptors had uh, assistant head coach or uh, head assistant coach rather um, rotates between a few guys on any mm -hmm. given night, which is very interesting, a uh, very interesting approach from Nick Nurse. So um, my question was um, Indiana is an interesting case because um, they do have talent and they might be on like maybe a second tier uh, within the conference. Uh, but it seems that they want to do a bit of a culture reset with um, firing uh, Nate McMillan. So um, based on the time that you spent with the front office, uh, what was the vibe that you got? Like, do you does this seem like an organization that um, intends to uh, compete at the highest level immediately, or like what what is the, what is where's their head at right now? Yeah, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. it's kind of the last trip I was able to go on before COVID and everything, you know, really started and killed all travel plans. But um, it was really interesting. You know, one thing that I learned while I was there, I, I got a chance to talk with Kevin Pritchard, Chad Buchanan, the GM. Um, Nate McMillan, all the players. Uh, it was like kind of a piece where I, I looked at their entire organization and how they run things and their culture there. And I think they actually do a really good job of clearly defining their culture. Every team talks about culture and, you know, they, they want to have that strong winning atmosphere, blah, 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 family environment, but they, they don't always clearly define it. And that was something that Pritchard said that he ran into when he was a player. He was a journeyman. So he bounced around the league and he would go to teams and not, wasn't really sure what they wanted from him, wasn't sure how he could help or contribute. And every team was kind of grading on a different rubric. So he said whenever, whenever he took over a team of his own, he said, I want to make sure it's a very clearly defined uh, you know, culture and, and what, what guys are being asked to, you know, what the guys basically know what's being asked of them and they, they know what exactly we want from them. So they actually have a thing there called the three T's uh, and it stands for togetherness, trust, and toughness. And they use it in their scouting. They look at players. They're like, Hey, this is a three T player. That's a two T player. I mean, it's like a really, and, and they joke, they're like, yeah, it's kind of corny, but at least guys know what we want from them. And it's interesting because Nate McMillan was kind of the, he really fit in with what they were trying to do there. He, hit, I mean, his playing style, who he was as a person. But I think what it came down to was the team just wasn't winning. They weren't advancing in the playoffs, and they felt like they had went as far as they could with Nate. So while I think he was an interesting fit, I think they're now realizing, okay, we have to go in a different direction if we want to go deeper in the playoffs. And honestly, part of the problem is 
the future of Victor Oladipo, Miles Turner, it's kind of up in the air. We don't really know what's going to happen with those players. Oladipo is rumored to potentially want out. Miles Turner, there have been some reports, not as many about Turner and what his future holds, but yeah. they may have to rebuild in the future, whether they like it or not. You know, Even if they want this core to be together, we don't know if that's necessarily going to happen. So bringing in someone like Nate, it's interesting. You know, Everything I've heard, I've been talking to people today about uh, about him and kind of what he brings to the table. And everyone says he's super positive and just has amazing energy and brings everyone up. And I, I think that doesn't get talked about enough when you talk about coaches because X's and O's are really important. And apparently he's really good at in-game adjustments too. And that's something that, you know, him and Nick Nurse, uh, you know, he, he has learned that a lot from Nick Nurse over the years. Um, but being someone that people just want to be around day to day and that kind of brings the energy up around a team and keeps everyone positive that's really important during an 82 game season when there's going to be a lot of ups and downs and you know losses and, and things like that so apparently that's something that everyone kind of raves about when you, when you talk about uh Bjorkren. um so i think that's going to be big but i do think he's a fit for their culture i mean uh i think they've done a good job of getting players who fit their culture and then um, you know, everyone kind of mentioned, oh, Mike D'Antoni, he could be a fit there. When I heard about their culture and it was all about toughness and defense, I mean, I was thinking that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I get why they keep tired on it because D'Antoni's had a long career and success, but I think Nate actually might be a better fit. So it, it, I think it actually, you know, makes a lot of sense that they went with him. Um, so I don't know if you guys agree, but um, oh God, what was I going to say? <laughs> Got the spotlight on me now. Yeah. <laughs> it was a <laughs> okay. Um, let me start the sentence to see where it goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it was it was a question relating to what you were just saying. But anyways, um, speaking of um, the Pacers in particular, um, when it comes to um, like their um issue that they they're not the issue i don't even say it's an issue but the wall that they kept hitting with um nick Mc, mcmillan now i remember my question um <laughs> it, it, it's kind of i don't know if you guys agree but it's kind of reminiscent of um the relationship between the raptors and dwayne case quite yeah dwayne casey yeah um, i see some parallels there where you have a coach who's contributed quite a bit to the established culture and the direction the team is heading in but you reach a ceiling with them uh, and I think we're seeing it, we saw it with Brett Brown um, and the Sixers as well, where you have this guy who's basically gone through the trenches with these players and has, you know, tolerated down years. And, you know, um, yeah, they flamed out in the playoffs, but these teams generally do quite well in the regular season. So um, how do you guys feel about, um, I, I guess, the the necessity of these coaches where, you know, they tend to coach middling teams, but um, I, I don't know. I, 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 a lot of people say it leaves a bad taste in their mouths. I know when Nate McMillan was fired, uh, it caused a, co a lot of controversy, as did um, Dwayne Casey's leaving. So mm -hmm. where do you guys stand on that? I think it's a little bit different, but I, I like this sort of comparison because it's just a Rockers assistant coach taking over for him in the end anyway. That's what I was going to say, too. Added bonus. Sorry. They know who to go for in order to win the championship. They're like, we're going to take the Raptors route and just pick, a, pick the tree, pick the branch off of Nick Nurse's tree and just go based off of that. They're trying to pick at Nick Nurse's uh, like winning plans. And I don't know. We'll see how that works out. Sorry, man. Go ahead. No, I love it. Completely. If it works, it works. But I think it's yeah. a little bit different. And, and I only say that because I think with the Raptors, you can look at actual years. If you it, like 2018, when Dwayne Casey got fired, the Raptors flamed out. Like that was where the Raptors were yeah. favored in a series. The Raptors were a number one seed. Um, the Cavs, the, you know, the, the the Pacers, the team we're talking about, took the Cavs to seven games, right? Like, this was a series that the Raptors should have won, and they got swept. And it was three sweeps in four years um, with a team that didn't have a lot of excuses. You kind of saw it through and ran out. I think that with Nate McMillan, you can kind of point to injuries. Um, yeah, they lost to a, a, a – technically, they were the higher seed in that, 4-5, uh, or five, which was, like, really a yeah. tough and such an odd year. Um, but – um, and, and yeah, they, they didn't have the playoff performance that they wanted to, but you can actually look at injuries on their rosters as to why. And I think there are built in excuses for Nate McMillan that didn't exist for Dwayne Casey. And that's the only reason why I see that is, is different. Well, yeah. The situation was weird too, because remember they put out that like fake extension where they basically, yeah. Seemed yeah, like they were was awesome. it was really yeah. weird. I, it, well, it was I about like, that. Yeah. It was almost like they were trying to just quiet the rumors and say, no, he's our guy. And if they, 
ended up, you know, succeeding, then they were going to keep him. But then they figured, okay, well, it's not like they really changed his deal very much. So worst case scenario, we can still get rid of him if we don't want, if we don't want to, you know, commit to him long term. So it was kind of strange the way it went down. I, I'm to be honest with you, I'm wondering if there's more information that we just don't have. If there was something behind the scenes that happened, which is, you know, it tends to happen. We're talking about coaching changes. You know, we don't right. always have all the information. It makes me wonder if that something like that happened where either he had lost the locker room or something. Cause it, it was just very strange the way it played out too. Yeah. yeah sure. I, I think it can be probably best likened to uh, Brett Brown situation where um, you have like the excuses of injuries in the postseason, but it seems that the team has kind of grown from you or needs to head in a separate direction. Like, I don't know. The Pacers, to me, the, the difference in that is that the Pacers overperformed in the regular season. The Sixers did not. Like you can right, see yeah. maybe Brett Brown lost the locker room. Like you can actually see that. I don't know that we look at, and like like you said, Alex, there could be things behind the scenes that we don't know about. But watching the Pacers on the court, I'm not like they don't like they're not playing for this coach or they're not playing hard. They're not trying. Right. You literally look at that and you're like, they're injured. What do you want from them? Yeah. Um and um and so I, I think that's a little bit different. I think there should be a larger conversation about the leash that black coaches have in the NBA. Um I think that they're so I, like I see the sort of comparison with Dwayne Casey in that sense because you're like number one seed and you win coach of the year and you get fired but like there are actual reasons for that like looking yeah. at it, you're like you flamed three sweeps in four years as the higher seed the number one seed in the east like there's no reason for that Nate McMillan didn't have that like unless there's some sort of behind the scenes thing that we don't know about I don't completely understand that firing especially because you don't have his replacement in mind right away like yes they yeah. took the rapid assistant but yeah sorry no that's a that's a great point because I, I always I'm a big believer of like don't fire <laughs> coach unless you have a guaranteed upgrade because yeah. I mean unless you have to because you know there's something behind the scenes happening or your star player is going to leave otherwise but well, we don't know um, you know, there's always situations like that, but yeah, to go with the first time head coach after, especially if you're saying we want to win right now, it does make me wonder if they're talking about, you know, preparing for life after Oladipo and Turner going with a guy that's, you know, known for being super positive and keeping people up during losses and, you know, being more maybe of a developmental type coach. Uh, Cause I do, I'm a firm believer in there being very different kinds of coaches. I think, you know, there's coaches that are great with young players that develop talent and create a culture. And I think there's coaches that, you know, do best when they're surrounded with, you know, talent and they're more of a championship contending type coach. I think teams kind of go through that uh, where yeah. they have one coach that kind of brings them along. And then that guy's kind I of, think that's, a, that's yeah. a theme I'm seeing as well. Like, I feel like there's like a connecting theme between a certain type of coach and then the type that is needed to kind of take a team over the edge. So I, yeah. on that note, where do you think uh, Steve Nash will lie? That's a great question. I'm curious to see what happens with Nash. Um, you know, I've been, we, we did the virtual watch parties for basketball news where we had a bunch of former players on and we had different coaches on. And it's interesting to hear their thoughts. A lot of players and, and coaches feel like from day one, he has to just really, you know, come in, show them who's boss. And because they you've heard the comments from Kyrie Irving saying, oh, well, we're going to kind of trade off coaching duties and some days will me some days it's kd like it's a group I, effort it's a group yeah. project and he may have been i i will kind of give Kyrie the benefit of the doubt he may have been trying to take the pressure off of nash and say like look we don't need him to be the best coach in the world that's the one way this to look is, at it i never looked at it that true. way i thought he was same being anti-establishment <laughs> <Same here. laughs> i thought it was third yeah. eye Kyrie. it's very possible because it is Kyrie that he was being anti-establishment but it's very possible he was trying to say like look we don't need a greg popovich because we have this talent you know blah 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 but i don't know that may not have been what he meant, but it, maybe that's what he was saying and got misconstrued. But I think uh, I'm curious to see what Nash can do. I think it really depends on who he surrounds uh, himself with as far as a staff, because, you know, you look at like Steve Kerr, for example, in Golden State. One of the reasons he was so successful is because he had Ron Adams and, uh, you know, different coaches there that really could help him. Because when you're he's never coached at any level. So that's where you have to have people around you that are amazing at adjustments and X's and O's. And I think Nash has a great personality and I think he's going to really relate to the players. And he already has a relationship with KD, which is huge. If you're tight with a star player that everyone else kind of has to fall in line. So but I think surrounding him with the right people is going to be really important. So I'm curious to see what happens. But like, you know, James Posey did a great article for basketballnews.com talking about how he can't imagine if he had, you know, been a head coach in the NBA for his first year coaching. And he actually, he did a whole year in the G League first and then moved over to the Cleveland Cavaliers staff. And he was just saying, he, you know, he would not have been ready coming right from his playing career 
to right. coaching. Especially, I mean, people don't realize all the responsibilities that a head coach has. You're in marketing yeah. meetings, you're doing speaking engagements, you're out in the community, you're basically a face of the franchise. And it's much bigger than just basketball. You're managing your whole staff, you're you're balancing so many different things. So, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of hiring a guy that's never had the job before, especially like never even been an assistant or in the G League or anything. So it could, I mean, it worked out with Steve Kerr, but at least Kerr had been in a front office with Phoenix and he had some experience. I mean, granted, Nash had the player development role with – Yeah, I was about to say that. But it's a little bit different. So, I yeah. don't know. It could work out, but it could also just be a dumpster fire. So, we'll see. I would like to see D'Antoni there, just on his bench, because I think that that could be, like, a really, you know, reunite. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. That, makes, yeah. that would make a ton of sense. Honestly. And just have that veteran presence there for Steve Nash to well, Yeah, for sure. D'Antoni was really trying to get the Philly job or the Indiana job. You know, that was like, you know, it, he was pushing for those jobs. Obviously, the Philly job seemed like he was one of the front runners. And then all of a sudden. That didn't make sense to me either. Like, you just said it with Indiana, him not really fitting their identity. But, like, also when I think of, like, uh, pace and space and I, like, think about, like, just, like, seven seconds or less and I think about a type of D'Antoni offense, I'm like, I don't know, Joel Embiid can't run really and yeah. Yeah, Simmons doesn't that, do three pointers. <laughs> I think the Pacers would have been a better fit for um, D'Antoni personnel wise because they don't shoot a lot of threes. I think they're among like the least attempts in the NBA period, but they do um, have the personnel to shoot. Like they have tons of shooters. Um, they have floor spacers. They have athleticism. Like I, it's it's weird that um, it, it, their system seems to be kind of dated considering that they have the people to make it modern. Yeah. Um, yeah which really is, might too. be why they made the coaching change, but yeah, um, true. very true. You know, he, and he did feel like Indiana had the right personnel that he could make it work there. He wanted the indie job or the Philly job, you know, and then it just didn't happen. So, I mean, I, I don't think he's interested in the new Orleans job or the OKC job. Uh, that was one thing that uh, Chris Sheridan had reported. So uh, at basketball news. So it's very possible that he is, you know, on, uh, Steve Nash's staff. That would be very interesting, and that would be huge for Nash. That would make his life so much easier. Um. So, I was gonna ask. Um, so much I feel like is hinging on for the next couple of years in the NBA is hinging on. I'm sorry. I thought that was me. I only did something fall. <laughs> but um, so much is hinging um in the NBA on. You know, Giannis is looming uh, Supermax extension. Um, I feel like a lot is riding on whether he does or does not sign. Um, do you think whether he signs now or later will affect the immediate moves that um, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to make? Like that, I'm asking anyone who know, who has an idea. <laughs> I'll jump in. I think when I look at that situation, Brian Winhurst was on my podcast recently and he made a great point. There's no real reason for Giannis to sign that Supermax extension other than just making the Bucks feel better. Um, I think he's going to want to keep that flexibility open. Um, and, and also whenever you have, you know, an upcoming free agency, it gives you power over the organization. You can basically say, Hey, you need to make these changes. You need to you know, show me that you're committed to winning. And granted, you know, we saw Milwaukee let Malcolm Brogdon leave, speaking of Indiana, um, and that was seemed like it was entirely financial. So, I mean, it, it's very possible that Giannis just doesn't sign it and says, no, if you want me to stay long term, prove to me that you're going to spend the money it takes to be a contender and, and be a winner. So, and and I think Winhurst was right. There's really no reason for him to sign that Supermax extension. Um, you know, he's the kind of player where, he can you, you can say, oh, what if he gets injured? I mean, he's the kind of player like a KD where even if he gets hurt, he's going to get a huge contract, yeah. max contract anyway. So I think I think it makes sense for him to wait. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, Milwaukee, I'm curious to see what they do as far as this offseason. You know, do they – Eric Bledsoe obviously has been someone that we've heard is available for trade. They want to upgrade the point guard position. You know, do they look at making even more changes and moving Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez? I don't think that would be the smartest thing, honestly, just because – then you're the Clippers and you have a ton of new faces and, and you're trying to make it work in year one. And I think next year is too important to try to convince Giannis to stay, to have a bunch of new players trying to get acclimated for the first time. And, and same yeah. thing with people are like, oh, fire coach Bud. Then again, you're starting from scratch in a year where you have yeah. to do that. So I don't know. I think it's I think it's risky. I, I think they're going to make more tweaks than that's just, you know than huge blowing up the roster type moves. But that's my opinion. I think aren't they also interested in um, Chris Paul? I think 
Is that what Giannis I heard? Interested in Chris Paul. I think Giannis yeah. might be <laughs> playing with Chris because Giannis uh, play with Larry. Yeah, I guess they. Well, yeah, I guess they. Yeah, He's yeah, gonna yeah. get a hang of like the Lowry Chris Paul first to see how Lowry's gonna really feel like, and then Chris come back Paul to Lowry after. Chris Paul with the ring and knees. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently, tough. they got close in the bubble whenever Milwaukee had the boycotted game. Him and Chris got close because I mean they were kind of talking a oh. lot. And, yeah, so like they they actually had developed a relationship. I think that is true. But for Milwaukee, that contract is so brutal. And again, yeah. maybe that's the kind of move where if you're if you're um, you're honest, you're like, hey, show me you're committed to winning and you're going to spend money. Go out, go get that contract. And that's hard to do because that might be, well, that's one of the worst contracts in the NBA. Chris helped it a little bit by playing well this year, but it's brutal. I yeah. mean, it's what, $41 million? And a team like Milwaukee, three I don't know. Three years, is that? What's Was that? It another three years or four years left or three I years? Think three. Um, oh, God. <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah. And, and he's How like old is Chris Paul? He's 36. Yeah. yeah. Also, I just have to say, Kelsey came in with some great analysis that we missed. Yeah, I saw that actually. One Nate with another Nate, and we just completely skipped over that. See, I was wondering much. why I couldn't follow My along because I don't really keep up with the Pacers. I'm like, which one, which Nate are they talking about? They said Nate. <laughs> oh, that was, that was which, <laughs> no, it's not your fault. I should be more like, I'm, I'm in a basketball <laughs> podcast. I should know more about the Pacers. My favorite Pacers thing is just names. Like when they used to have like Solomon Hill, George Hill, Paul George. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Names. like I was like, if I was an NBA GM, that's what I would do. I want to call Landry on the Raptors because we had Pat Lowry as Landry Fields. Like that's, that's my uh, NBA team building. So it. it seems that um, the idea is that the Bucks would make like fringe uh, alteration. And what's weird is that um, they're they they might be or like I feel like I've read a lot saying that Giannis provided uh, the front office with a list of players he'd ideally like to play with or players that have piqued his interest uh, potentially, but. Um, I feel like the Sixers are in a similar spot where they're looking for the same player, which is, you know, a uh, pick and roll ball handling point guard or combo guard um, to help run their offense as the Milwaukee Bucks. So do you think it, there would be like kind of an interesting uh, bidding war or something humorous to come out of this? Because I feel like it's, it's, it's very funny how they both are looking for the same type of player that they're missing in their rosters. Yeah, is in Miami it, also? I heard that Miami's yeah, also and they're Miami running too. for a PG yeah. too. So you got the three top three. All the East Ugh. contenders are going to be pursuing the same people and starting. Like yeah. That'll be interesting. Like but a Drew Holiday, it, even. The Except for the Depot rumors. I mean, Victor Depot, Depot, similar combo guard. Yeah, can handle the ball. Is, Nikaias wrote like a, a great article recently where he broke down possible mm -hmm. destinations for Victor Oladipo. And he mentioned Miami, Milwaukee. I mean, and then Drew Holiday is obviously going to be, he's going to be one of the most highly coveted players this offseason. Like every mm -hmm. team can benefit from adding him. He's an amazing teammate, amazing on the court, off the court. Uh, he just won teammate of the year. Like I think a ton of teams are going to try to get Holiday, which is going to, I mean, create, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if New Orleans trades him. You know, in the past, they valued him so much. They didn't want Where to do you think he him. goes? But He's going to have just tons of value at this point. Uh, I mean, think? I think Brooklyn is another team that's going to show interest in him. There's going to be so many teams yeah. showing interest in Holiday. I don't know where he's going to land, but when you have tons of teams like that showing interest and there's a bidding war, I think it could get to the point where, you know, New Orleans is like, okay, we finally are getting enough for him. We can do this. We can move on. Yeah. It seems kind of inevitable, anyway. especially when you look at the, um, the age makeup of their roster. They have so much young talent. Um, that a, a player like Drew just seems like he should be on a contender right now while they mm -hmm. go into some sort of rebuild um, and, you know, build better around um, their younger uh, superstars. So, like, I, I don't know if uh, if Drew Holiday fits right now on a roster with a Zion, with the Brandon Ingram, Alonzo. Like, it just it seems that they, they have a tough decision to make because they're also a team that fired their head coach. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly, like, that's a firing I did not understand. Like, I felt like, um, yeah, same. Yeah, no, I felt like his offense was like quite fitting for their roster. Like, I thought it was the way he was utilizing um, Zion was very interesting to me. And it, it seems you'd wait like a season to see how that pans out. So, um, I can see Drew um, finding his way to another team. Um, we kind of already spoke about uh, Victor Oladipo. Do you guys have anything else to say about where you think uh, Victor ends up or uh, whether you think that um, maybe a coaching change was all that he needed to kind of stay on the roster? <laughs> Nora, I'll let you take that one. Where do you think he goes? 
I don't know. I feel like um, because he's been so injured and he hasn't really had the opportunity to really show, um, really put on a show however he used to, I feel like maybe he would give this a chance to kind of see where the year goes and how um, he operates under this leadership and how his and just how this coach is able to bring out certain aspects of him and of his teammates and kind of push them over the edge that we always say that they always hit that wall, kind of like how the Raptors always hit LeBronto. They just never were able to go over that hunch. So if if I'm Victor, um, I feel like Victor, I feel like I'm um, like, I would probably, I don't know. Like, I feel like he, he does seem like he does want to leave. Like he, he does seem like he thinks the grass, the grass might be greener somewhere else. But if I'm Victor, like I'm probably, I would think about what the opportunities are with this new, um, with this new coach, because yeah. you already have a team that like you're kind of solidified in. You already have a team where you have a role, you have, you know, what to expect of yourself, what to expect of your teammates. And and you have all coaching caliber, change. sorry, you, yeah, you sorry. also have all star caliber teammates. Like that's the thing that's kind of crazy to me. Like just wait for a healthy season, you know? With yeah, your exactly. Because Iman made a really good point. Like we really haven't seen the Pacers healthy in a really long time. And um, even when they weren't healthy, they were doing really well. Like they didn't have perfect or all deep last season, and they they were in the playoffs and they were pushing. I mean, they didn't make a deep run, but they probably could have. Um, but I think that um, just going forward, just just to kind of like I'm I'm that way with coaches too. I feel like with the um, with the uh, with the Pelicans um, firing the coach, I don't think that was fair either. Because when you're when you've been given a new set of people to kind of learn to coach and look, look, get to know what their play style is and everything, <clears throat> you can't really you know like chow that down in the first year. You're not Nick Nurse. Um, so you might need a couple of more years just to get a feel of more things and see how just how, just learn how to better utilize each person's skill set and learn how to make that better into a whole team. So I think for Victor Oladipo, like if I'm him, I would probably wait out to see just how this unfolds and how the following year goes. And I mean, if it's another bubble year, it doesn't count. So it's OK. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Does it doesn't fully count until it's, it's like... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it, won't go ahead, count, it won't count until the Raptors win. That's what I'm saying. But if I'm, <laughs> if I'm a team, too. I don't know that I'm like giving up a lot for Victor Oladipo. That's what I was going to say too. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. yeah. I'll, let you, I'll let you. uh You're our guest today. <laughs> oh no. I totally agree with you because I mean I covered Vic in Orlando and he was much younger then, obviously. But you know, uh he wasn't the player that he is today. He's improved so much and gotten you know so much better as a guy as a player uh he's obviously the star in indiana right now and um he's made huge strides but we saw him in orlando and okc and he didn't always you know fit with the personnel there so i don't think you can expect him to be the kind of guy that goes to any team and he thrives and is a superstar i think he kind of needs the right pieces around him and i think also you know he has his injury history. And then also, if you're a team, he can hit free, ag unrestricted free agency after next season. So mm -hmm. it could be potentially trading for him as like a one-year rental. So teams aren't going to be offering a whole lot. That's one thing that, That's you know, Nishai so kind of mentioned in his article. If teams are making offers, if you're Indiana and it's like, okay, we can either keep him and either try to sway him and, and sell him on staying here long term or we take one of these offers that isn't super appealing because teams are scared to leave after one year. That's always the thing. You know, whenever a star player is – able to just walk in free agency after one season and he has injury history and you know he is no he's a star like i think that's right. the other thing it's like free agency which is, which is on you're like why give why trade anything and like injury history and how good is he like the last well, he was difficult he was too. in orlando he's kind of difficult too he kind of had that reputation oh. for kind of being a bit high maintenance so like there's that as well. There's a lot of factors that I think if you're if you're a GM, you're wondering, okay, do I really want to give up a ton of assets to get Vic, or you know, do you go elsewhere? Do you, I mean, I, that's kind of if a team can get that get him without giving up very much, then sure, you know, we obviously have seen those one year rental type trades can work out, and you can do really well. Maybe he'll decide to stay long term. Maybe you win a championship in that one year, as you guys all know with Toronto that worked with Kawhi. But I don't know if. Obviously, compare. I'm not comparing Kawhi and Oladipo because <laughs> very different level of players. But there's just a lot of factors there that make me wonder if teams will be hesitant to trade for Vic or give up a lot to acquire him. Yeah, Bradley Beal yeah. uh, putting all of those lies out in the media is helping you, Victor. Though he's doing his best to try to prove that he wants to stay in Washington. I'm so curious <laughs> to have with Bradley Beal. You don't think? He 
What do you think he wants to I think, I think Bradley Beal was just like, yes, I want to be here forever. That's it. like the <laughs> entire world. Because he, he signed the extension. I mean, like he, he definitely didn't. It's yeah. not just all talk with him. Like he did sign the extension. I don't know. It, it's very possible that he just signed it to get his money. And then he's like, I'll just request a trade later and get out of here. But okay. He saw what happened with, with John Wall. Like, if you watch that happen, you, I think, learn, take your money when you can because anything can happen next year. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what was strange about this season is that I feel like half of the superstars that we've come to know and love were actually injured for, like, either the <laughs> portion or the full duration of the season. So – just to name a few, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Stephen Curry, John Wall, Clay Thompson, Blake Griffin. Like these are players that have missed all or a portion of the season. Uh, who are you guys personally most excited to see come back or most interested? Like it doesn't even have to be like your favorite player or anything, but who's a player that you just can't wait to see uh, for the 2020 uh, season? I think we talked about this on the podcast, but I cannot wait for a Steph Curry shimmy. I, the, the things I would do for a Steph Curry shimmy on the court right now is I can't probably can't list them on the podcast, but <laughs> I, he's just, he's, he's so like, as we talked about this too on the podcast last week, but he's just, he's so entertaining as a, as a player. And especially I think Yas mentioned last week as well, that it's, it's his regular season performance. The, 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 put, the show that he puts on, he makes sure that the people who buy tickets are going to get their money's worth. He's always there to perform. He's always going to get you his threes. He's always, he's going to put on a show. And I think that's kind of something that we were missing this season. I didn't realize how much, how many actual personalities were missing from this past season. You have Kevin Durant, you have Steph Curry, you have Kyrie, you have John Wall. And then I also miss Blake Griffin. Like I, I, I hate that he's with Detroit right now. I think that uh, <laughs> he should be somewhere else. He should be with Detroit. I don't know who would can make a run for him. Um, who needs a power forward in a center? Well, I I'm, guess like a lot of people. I'm, I'm, Go ahead. I'm just going to say, if you miss Blake Griffin at this point, maybe just turn on 2016, Dave. I feel like that's your turn on what, sorry? So if you She's miss turn on 2016 point, tapes. Just like go to YouTube, start looking at old tapes. I don't know. I'm sorry. I also I also miss him selfishly just for looking at him reasons. So I want him to I want him to be able to play for him. wrong, but was it um he had like he he finally got a knee surgery he needed was it i think so yeah I, think mm -hmm. knee surgery last year. I feel like he had been putting it off i don't remember quite like i do remember he was playing with a giant knee brace during the playoffs last season versus the milwaukee bucks and it seemed that he had something that he needed to take care of um but i will say like um he's kind of developed like even in his age right now uh, where he still has a couple of years remaining on his prime, he's become such a well-rounded wing where he can yeah. base anything mm -hmm. on the court. He might not be yeah. the a defender that he can be, but um, as a three-level scorer, as a passer, like it's it amazing. sucks. That I understand when definitely like, Detroit is not in a place right now where they can maximize Blake Griffin. Yeah, um, exactly. Detroit's <laughs> not in a place right now where they can maximize anybody. Yeah, like we 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 always say that um, whenever we're talking about Pascal Siakam, we're talking about like his uh, trajectory and whether it's unprecedented. Like, is there a player that has become like a seven points per game and the bench guy um, to the focal point of a team offense? And I always say Blake Griffin. Like, that's the last time a player has transformed their game to that extent. Like, to go from yeah. an athletic. Um, guy who can, but he was um, not, he obviously wasn't world. a bench player. He was a he, he was, was a focus of the Pelican. He was of a year. It's a little yeah. No, I'm not. And now that's not my comparison. I mean, in terms oh, of actual skill set, like actually oh, yeah. becoming yeah, yeah. a yeah. scorer, yeah. becoming Great like the focal point the of like, yeah. actual yeah. passer. Yeah, like, he's so good yeah. at passing. He can like, actually create the space with his big man, which is like yeah. huge to find. But also, like, yeah, yeah, and Blake Griffin in his prime, like, if you talk about that, what was it, the 2017? What was the Spurs Clippers year? Like, that Blake Griffin. If you can get anything close to Siakam like that in the playoff series, Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> like, that's the best comparison I have in terms of a player who just had to transform their game in order to yeah. fit their team better. Uh, and yeah, I wish he was somewhere where he can actually display the, those skills that I'm sure he worked so hard to Because he was having, I'm not sure if it was, I don't I don't think it was this season. It was, it was last season, I'm pretty sure. But he was having a, a pretty nice, like, he was, his numbers were fantastic for the yeah. team that he was leading with, right? Like, he was still, he was having historic yeah. numbers. Yeah, I think that was probably one of his better years. Um, of his career so I feel like it, he still has a couple more years to go and if he's able to use that talent and really um help out a contender that would be huge just for him and for the team 
You just how about you, Emma? Contract though. So, uh, I mean, yeah. I think that's part of the problem too. Like, I'll take it. To... It's okay. I'll pay for it, Raptors. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You'll pay for it out. Yeah, out of the addition dime salary, you're gonna go ahead. Hi, and that play. is not a thing that's happening. I love you, Blake. <laughs> we can love you from afar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Iman. Our Patreon is going towards Blake Griffin's the salary. <laughs> That's the salary. Not you guys are doing really well on Patreon. Wow. It's incredible. <laughs> We've kind of abandoned it. We're trying to restart it. We, we can cover his coffees for the month. That's pretty much about it. <laughs> Listen, the last time he was in Toronto, we punched someone in the face. That wasn't the last time he was in Toronto, but that was one time that he was oh in Toronto. Oh, my God. We oh yeah, I forgot about that. Face. We don't. reach memory. does something to Blake. We don't want that. <laughs> you get aggressive, Blake. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe we do need that. Uh, uh, what about you? <laughs> almost. I got. We're almost. Technically, we we ended eight, but we actually wanted to extend this a little bit because we have a special guest on. And normally, at the end of our episodes, we ask listeners to send us questions, but we decided to flip the switch today. Flip the script today. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you questions instead here as our guest. Or are you prepared for oh, us God. to ask you a series of questions, Alex? Let's do it. By the it way, it wasn't I, part I, of the Google Doc, man. I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> By the way, I love that Kelsey. Her question that he she tweeted was, "Do you guys think I'm pretty?" <laughs> That First of all, great. Kelsey, you are gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, go go ahead. Ahead. All guys. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. I have the questions right in front of me. Okay. So we are going to ask you 10 questions to see how much you know, first about Canada. Oh, God. I'm going to do so bad. How much you know about us here at Dishes and Dents? Okay. Who has right. their driver's license? That's one. Oh right? that's, that's, okay. I'm not even going to get into it, but it is. Please don't. No, that is legitimately don't. one of them. How do you know? <laughs> Here's the thing. We can't escape it. Okay. So question number one. All right, so basketball has ended, and we're all trapped inside for COVID. So what are two shows that are your must-watch binge TV shows? What are you watching now that you don't have basketball all day? Okay, yeah. So I actually hadn't watched The Sopranos before, so I went and watched that, and that was amazing. Uh, I can't believe I went that long without watching that. Um, Where did you watch it? Which, which, did you stream it? Because I've been trying yeah, to watch it, too. I had it. Uh, I have, like, HBO through Hulu, so I watched it on, on there, oh. and it was, it was amazing. And then Fargo was the other one that I watched, and, you know, there's, like, four seasons of it, so I was able to just binge it. Uh, and then, oh, and The Boys, too. I'll give you an extra one. The oh Boys. God, everyone's watching that. I keep seeing it. I, know. I, I hate that it's over. Season two just ended, but it was so good. I, I'm so bummed it's over. That was great. And then what also, is it? Like, I don't know what so, it is. Yeah. Okay, is it so like an it, action it, thing? it's like a, a very realistic look at if they were actually superheroes. So, like, and the superheroes are mm-hmm. kind of like sociopaths. They're like the celebrities. So, the it's a group of guys that are like fighting against evil superheroes. So everyone thinks these superheroes are great and they're amazing but really they're like sociopaths and like really douchey celebrities so the in like they murder people and they're just awful but everyone thinks they're amazing and uh and it's like okay, a real, that out. yeah it's so like, like, a like actual movie. celebrities taking on marvel yeah so like a re, like look at like what would actually happen if they were superheroes and they'd be egotistical they'd be sociopaths they'd be just awful so these people are trying to take them down and it's super interesting it's the best show i love it is it based on actual superheroes or are they like their own made up uh, character? They're their own. There's like a character called Homelander, but he's like Captain America. There's okay. um, Homelander. <laughs> yeah, it's there's like there's a lot of them, but it's great. It's it's really really good. You should watch it. That's funny. That's this like is brought to you by movie. The Boys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> All right, sponsor so, us. Yeah. Next, yeah. Question. next question. This is also just to get to know you a little bit. Some of okay. our questions are to get to know you a little bit. If you were in the Hunger Games. <laughs> Um, and you had to partner with one nba player try to win it all who would you partner (laughs) with and why oh man that's really good um we asked the tough hmm. questions here dishes and dives that's a really good one i mean i'm I'm almost tempted to go with like one of the morris twins first but (laughs) okay it's like the aggressive you're just gonna get everyone upset at you that's just gonna put a huge yeah that's actually a really good point oh i should go for a little likable kind of like the cat in this pita type thing so people root for me so give me luca easily we're gonna get all the people and luca they're gonna send me like the different uh help things like i'm gonna get the care packages yeah (laughs) (laughs) i want to i want to hear you guys answer that one too yeah yeah i want to know i want to know where you guys the project he has all of espn they'll be all sending me stuff are you kidding that's a great point i would get if i teamed up with lebron we have we've got 
uninterrupted. We've got a whole bunch of things sending me. Sending That's me a good point. LeBron's a good I think I choose. Yeah. I think I choose Marc Gasol. I think he had like a garden. Like we'd be able to survive. It would be like a very practical. <laughs> Like he's he he what is he he goes to like um the the Spanish countryside every year like I'm sure he knows like how to survive with yeah. limited resources. Nora, so. what about you? What do you got for us? If I'm there to die, and I'm not going to come back, um, Blake Griffin. But if I want to make it out alive, listen. If I'm going to die, it's going to be with Blake Griffin. But if it's not <laughs> with Blake Griffin, then I would just want Kyle Lowry to teach me and just get me out of there because he's the leader and he knows what he's going to do. Oh, his, his... I picked uh, Jimmy Butler. I'm just going to say. Oh yeah, true. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I think he's a terrible. I think he's a terrible teammate because he's gonna make you do a lot of work. Like he's gonna be like <laughs> kill people, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to chase people. I don't want to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Playing country music. I mean, come on. Yeah, like, I, I feel like Kyle Lowry traps. and I feel like Kyle Lowry and Chris Paul would be like super preoccupied with like the the um like the drama between like teams and players and like uh, uh, contestants on the show on the, kind of like on the, in the game. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I feel like it would be like survivor you know survivor yeah. is just like a, a reality television show with drama what like, about it would Kawhi? Be like, i feel like Kawhi would just be business i feel like yeah we wouldn't talk i get bored but then he's no entertainment yeah that's true. actually no, he'd be mean, but, i just talk a lot he would sit in a tree like the whole time he'd be up in a tree with his arrow that's it but you're right though like if you want to like i mean yeah he might not talk to you you get bored but you might live like i'd rather i mean versus <laughs> if quickly, you want to make it up that's I mean, what I'm saying. You gotta think of it both ways. If you want to make it alive, then you want someone good. But if you know you're gonna die, yeah. then you want to go with someone you're gonna have a good time with. Because if you if you make it alive, <laughs> if you make it out alive, and I know like people are gonna be like, well, only one person is supposed to survive. But like, who cares? We're we're creating our own Hunger Games, where two people are alive. <laughs> you're gonna finish and like do all of these like press tours, and everybody's gonna think that you guys are like this ultimate duo who's gonna save the world, and he's just gonna leave you the next year like nothing happened. And it's I not have to <laughs> Oh, he's gonna yeah. just, he will end up going to district like one and yeah, I'm going to be like, where, where'd you go? Kawhi? Really, like, really mechanical, just headshots, like just trails <laughs> everywhere you go. Jared Jeffrey. We're in the crunches together. I think he's a sniper. He just hide in the trees and just snipe people. I think like, Jared Jeffries would be good. Jared Jeffries is like really outdoorsy and like fishes and stuff. Like he could be decent. I mean, okay. that's, that's more just for, like, up there. For, uh, <laughs> for fishing like in outdoorsy reasons, but. That's a great question. I like that question a lot. Um, by the way, I love the other day, you guys were talking about superlatives and you were talking about who you wouldn't want to get in the car with. And you guys said the Morris twins. And that was an amazing answer. Uh, and Dwight Howard. Morai. Yeah, those were those were great. But sorry, go the ahead. Lakers Morris. answered and they said Quinn Cook. We're so sorry, Quinn Cook. Basketball and news family. But like, <laughs> they left it the bus. Like, no. Was, oh yeah, oh my God. Poor guy. Poor He's guy. on IG Live telling them to turn the bus around. Had the war. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, so oh, next no. question. Just to, you know, learn a little bit more about you. Um, did you have a favorite team growing up? We know you're in the Florida area, but did you have a favorite player or favorite team going up? And how has that changed since becoming a media member? I like that question. Yeah, I was a big Orlando Magic fan because I grew up, you know, just outside of Orlando. Uh, Tracy McGrady was like my favorite player by far. I had like- Are you like, a fan of Bison Dele? Sorry to interrupt. What did you say? Bison Dele, Orlando Magic rookie. Were you, was that yeah. a little bit before you started watching? It was, yeah, I was gonna say it was a little, little bit before. Younger, <laughs> it was before my time to be honest. Like, yeah. um, but no, I was a huge T-Mac fan, like to the point, like, I had like tons of shirts and like the little armbands and like T-Mac shoes and all that. Like I was like obsessed. And so it was like really cool whenever I started covering basketball later and like I got a chance to interview him one-on-one -on -one when he was on the Spurs in the finals and stuff. So that was like a really cool moment. But yeah, I love T-Mac. I love the magic. Uh, and like legit, I would, I, I like went to some playoff games and like painted my body and stuff. Like I was oh like, oh, you have then, what is that? Do you have pictures of that? Of, I like, do. We should have got them to uh, display them on the podcast today. God yeah. You'll be our guest next week too, Alex. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> all my pictures. We'll just go through all my old pictures. Uh, <laughs> We're going to go through yeah. your albums. They're going to have them narrating. <laughs> we'll have Iman yeah. narrate, actually. Yeah. I was a huge Magic fan, but to answer your question about how it changed, it changed yeah. so much. I honestly don't have any kind of rooting interest anymore. And it really kind of sucks to be honest, like, mm. because I mean, you go from being a huge fan of a, of a team. And then once you're like, you're in the journalism type, 
side of things, they always tell you, you know, you have to be objective. You can't root. And like, and I, I started covering games when I was 14 years old. So I was super young. So you're at games and you're in like the press area and they say, you know, you can't clap, you can't cheer. So like, it really kind of drains the fandom out of you, which kind of sucked. So like, I'm a huge Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan now. And I always said like, I will never cover football or anything because I don't want to have to ruin my fandom because it's like really the only fandom I have left because I don't care about baseball or hockey or their sports. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that definitely went away. And now I would say instead, of, I don't really root for any team. I root for specific players because in this job, I get to know a lot of players, especially with like basketball news. Now, you know, there are guys that are on our staff that we're working with or guys where I've gotten to know them since they were like in high school and I know their families and stuff. So I'm rooting for them to do well and like get paydays and stuff like that now, but I don't really have a, any kind of rooting interest as a, as a fan, like for a team. So it does suck. Um, but and, and now I will say in journalism, you're kind of a- that change a bit. Like we see some people that just keep their fandom and like, you know, that's, that's going to become more popular where you could still have, have a fan. You can still be a fan of a team, but like that wasn't a thing whenever I was kind of coming up. Everyone made it cl- very clear. You cannot mm. be a fan of a team. So, yeah. You're about to say something. Now? Uh, do you think it's, yeah, I was going to say, is it a case of like kind of peeking behind the curtain and seeing the inner workings of the league that kind of, does it make you make you a little disillusioned or not yeah. in a bad way, but just kind of like, maybe jaded into it? Yeah, no, that is definitely part of it. And like, I will say one of the reasons why I started, fandom? yeah, yeah. Like you, I think you start to realize like, oh, like some of these guys that are on my quote unquote favorite team are actually kind of jerks. And like, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit different when you see things behind the scenes. And then, um, yeah, I mean, and, and also like, this sounds horrible to say, but like, and I think we all have the best job in the world. Like to be able to do this, it's the best job. It's my dream job that I literally talk about sports all day. But at some point when you've been doing it for a while, it does become work. So you're not watching a game as a fan. You're watching the game and writing an article mm-hmm. and live tweeting it and doing a stream. You know, it just it's it does become work a bit, which you know, it's the best kind of work, but it's not like you're watching it's a way it's a different way of watching the game. That's what I always tell people. You're not watching <laughs> you know, rooting and watching your fantasy team and all that. You're just watching it because you have to write about it and talk about it the next day. So it's just a very different kind of way of watching it from my experience. But yeah, seeing behind the scenes definitely doesn't help with, uh, you know, certain players you get to know and things like that. Um, but yeah, so and, and also like, I think as a fan, you tend to, you know, villainize the other team. And oh, I hate that guy. He screwed my team over. And then like, it's different when you actually know the people and you're like, oh, that guy's a really nice dude with like, you know, three kids at home and he's a great dad. It's like, <laughs> can't keep him now. Damn. like it is very different when you kind of see it from the journalism side. Um, so you kind of touched on this already and you, you mentioned Tracy McGrady. Um, and I, I wanted to get into like, what was your biggest, you know, you talked about having to be a journalist and you lose the fandom. And I think you have to lose some of that fanboy excitement when you meet people got to act like you've been there before. Yeah. Um, but besides Tracy McGrady, is there somebody else or was there someone, on par i mean your abby kind of is a big name as well there you know <laughs> See the people that you get to interview so who was the biggest sort of fan boy moment that you had doing yeah it? so kobe bryant was my podcast mm-hmm. a year ago and that was crazy i still can't believe that That's happened right, that, yeah. yeah so <clears throat> he randomly followed me on twitter one day and i i was like stunned and that was a crazy moment like 13 year old alex was going nuts in my <laughs> head like and I, I just couldn't believe it and then we started DMing back and forth and I was like, Hey, I really appreciate it. It was actually, I think he followed me two years ago and, uh, and he had just, he was about to do the show on ESPN plus like the detail show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd seen, he had followed like me and like two or three other journalists. And I was like, I wonder if he's trying to promote something like <clears throat> kind of like putting two and two together. So I reached out and I said, I'm super excited to watch your show. You know, I'd love to have you on my podcast to kind of talk about it. And then he was like, yeah, let's do it. That sounds great. Um, and, you know, I think I, I was at Hoops Hype at the time. And I think, you know, he read Hoops Hype. So many players and executives read Hoops Hype, which was really kind of cool too, seeing mm-hmm. how many people are kind of seeing your work and stuff. So he kind of knew of Hoops Hype. And then he was like, yeah, go ahead, like coordinate it with my PR person. I'd love to do it. So we started talking. And I think about a month later, he came on for like 30, 35 minutes and he was fantastic told great stories, was super engaged, um, and it was awesome. And then, um, you know, he and I would continue to text a little bit after that and stuff. So that was like a really cool one because, I mean, I did grow up watching Kobe Mm -hmm. and, you know, appreciating his game and thinking he's just, you know, amazing. Uh, So, yeah, that was that was a really cool one. And, yeah, Kareem, which you mentioned, that was a really cool moment, too, uh, because that was in person. The Kobe one was just over, you know, uh, it was over Skype. Uh, whereas the Kareem one, you know, I'm sitting with him in person and that was kind of intimidating because 
I feel he's like so, Kareem looks like he's like nine foot tall. Like anytime I see yeah. him on TV, I'm like, this is a giant. So I can't imagine in real life. Well, and I always say like, it takes a lot. It takes, you have to be really tall for me to like be shocked by it because I've been around so many tall people. Like yeah. my wife was like, oh my God, that guy's so tall. I'm like, he's like six, five. Like, come on. He's not that tall. <laughs> like, but then you, you see Kareem and you're like, oh my God, like, that's crazy. Like there's certain guys that you're just like, whoa, like, and he was the nicest guy too. Like it, he was amazing. Like I had heard like rumors like, oh, he can be grumpy and you don't really know. And I'm like, oh God, like that was kind of nerve wracking too. And then he was the nicest guy, he gave me all, you know, as much time as I needed. So those are two that really stand out. And he's a writer too. Did you guys talk about his own? Yeah. Um, so he had, words? we talked about his writing and then we also talked about, he had just uh, been a writer on Veronica Mars, the TV show. And we talked about that. <laughs> what? My and favorite was, TV show. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> yeah. So he was, <laughs> he was in the writer's room. He was a writer on like the reboot on Hulu. And it's funny because it's my wife's favorite TV show too. Uh, so we were talking about, you know, she like loves Veronica Mars. So like, you know, I have seen all the episodes because she loved it and like we binged it. And then I found out when they rebooted it, he was one of the writers in the writing room. So we talked about that and he was like, I feel like the rookie again. I can't believe, you know, it was so weird being in a TV room. Like I'm so new to all this, but they were so helpful and so friendly and it was super interesting. He's That's an amazing crazy. writer. I was just talking about like some of his Time Magazine pieces that I've read over the years. I wasn't even talking about yeah. writing. That's amazing he does both. writing. That's it's so insane. crazy. I'm jealous. He's so talented. Like it's unfair that, you know, one of the best basketball players of all time is one of the best writers of our generation and just does <laughs> up there. It's like pick one. Pick like, right. pick one. Like, like, you can't be like a historical figure <laughs> in both sports <laughs> and politics. You and can't play basketball and write about it, about it yourself. Like you can't have both jobs. Yeah, <laughs> like, 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 a year from now, he's gonna be like an astronaut or something. Like, come on, yeah. we get it. We can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's like leave something for us. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Oh, no, he's awesome though. It was great. That's insane. Uh, I did not know that. I we learned know, something new. I, I just find this kind of interesting to, I, like, I don't even know how to technically word this, but like, if you could have been around to cover one, it could be like a playoff series or it could be like a major moment in NBA history. I know that you've been doing this for a long time, but probably something before then, or maybe something that you miss. Mm -hmm. What would that one thing have been? If you could have been like, I wish I was there. Could have been the bubble. Could be, you know, I don't know. The Lakers three peat something. Yeah, something that's more. a that's a great question. Honestly, it would probably be just to like have covered Michael Jordan because mm. I've met Michael Jordan, like owner Michael Jordan, and but I haven't like interviewed Prime him. Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think covering him as a player would have been cool. Like, I mean, I've been so fortunate to be able to cover LeBron for you know a lot of his career, and I think that's that's kind of a cool thing just because. Yeah, obviously he's been amazing. Um, and I, I kind of look at like the guys that I got a chance to interview and there's like just so many that, uh, but MJ is one that I haven't really interviewed. And like, I've talked to, um, you know, some people from that era, like I've interviewed Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, but like never MJ. So I think interviewing him, but like also just covering his career. And I mean, he obviously was an amazing player, but then also just the circus that was going on around him because he was Michael Jordan before camera phones and, in that era, like yeah. he had some wild yeah. stories and parties and nightclub adventures. So that would be really interesting too. I think that would be cool. All right. Uh, so that was us, you know, getting to know you a little bit. And now it's about Canada and Dishes and Dimes. So All right. this is a cool. So we had um, the lovely Marie Holloway on our podcast and we asked her, we gave her a Canadian quiz and she did so well. And everybody's like, you guys are being too easy. But oh, I'm God, like, come on. It's okay. Come it's okay. On. okay. I'm not, I'm not going to get yeah, hard questions. She's Got been it. to okay. Canada a lot. Her son plays here. We well, just a little bit. I will say. Yeah. Before we start, I've never, I've only, I told you guys this, I've never no. been to Canada. I've been across like the mm -hmm. Niagara Falls version. Like I've been to the Niagara Falls side of Canada and like. The crappy I mean, side? Like, yeah. yeah I was side? Yeah. I was literally a child. So like, I am going to do so bad <laughs> here. Never I come to Toronto. Oh, no, 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 we're I know, I, That's my shocking. Job, you know, my past job, I didn't travel a whole lot. Like this is, I, I traveled here and there, but like, I wasn't like a beat writer where I was at, you know, every way. Right. I didn't go to all the all-star weekends and stuff. So I'm going to do horrible, but. It's okay. Too much on the Canada. I like. I don't have two. I just have one to start off. Okay. No. Um, sure. Okay. So this, you don't have to be Canadian to know this. You just have okay. to be, you know, into food. Uh, so poutine. Are you familiar with the poutine? Okay. So yeah. can you name <laughs> the ingredients that a poutine consists of? 
Okay, so I'm going to do, I think, okay, the, you're going to laugh at me, I think. I know it's French fries and then, uh, it's not gravy, is it? Like, what is on top of it? I can't tell you. You okay. have to tell us. This is this is the quiz, Alex. Yeah, no, but that, that was kind of my guess. Like, <laughs> My face will give it away. I need to hide it. Okay. I'm going to make a little on this and no one sees our face. I should have known, I should know this, but I think it's, yeah, <laughs> I think it, I think it's, fries like gravy or something like that and then i don't i don't know the third one is it cheese i don't know ding 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 yeah you got it gravy on french fries that's it oh, wow. see i'm like i'm weird i don't like anything on my fries at all like so i'm kind of weird so i've never really eaten it but I, okay dry sure, potatoes <laughs> I should that was that was I should have been easier, but okay. No, that wasn't bad. So we we had like a series of them. I didn't put them in here, but just to throw them at you, they're not even okay. on my list. Do you know what a toque is? Some mm. Canadian words for you. No, I like that. Yeah. No, I don't. A toque is a beanie. It's just a Oh, hat. okay, okay. Uh do you know what a loony is? It's it was mentioned on the watch party. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's money. Yeah. How much? Like, what is a loony? Uh, yeah, uh, he said it. With, I have a loony. Said, how much he money do I have? Party. He didn't say, is it a dollar? And how much would a toony be if a loony, how much would a toony be? Looney tunes? What is this? Um, <laughs> let me see. Toony, I mean, two dollars? I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's so you got it. Oh, you me and the tuning, guys. That's what we're doing here. All right. Um, and if I said I wanted a double double, would you know what that would be? Uh, ten points, ten rebounds. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, double. double. <laughs> um, no, I don't. It's a coffee with two creams and two sugars. There oh. you go. Now you oh, know gosh. how to order a coffee here. Don't you guys have like Tim Hortons? Is that that's really that's that yeah. you get from Tim Hortons? You get a double double from okay, Tim Hortons. Cool. You get the, yeah. you'll get the but the best puddle water you've ever had. I've had Tim Hortons. My my wife, her family's from Maine, so they have Tim Hortons okay. there. So I oh okay. I've American Tim Hortons. Hortons is even worse than Canadian Tim Hortons. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> yes, right. I love your look right now. You're like the perfect host. Look at her mic stands. Oh, killing it. Oh, yeah. I know she's like killing it. Okay, Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Okay. <laughs> my back is <laughs> I can't like bend. Um, I have to hold it up to my face because we I'm need tired. to like it, when we have like a, a basketball new when COVID is over. We're just gonna bring you a bunch of like Canadian snacks. You'll get like ketchup chips and like fuzzy peaches. Yeah. It's like really unfortunate that America doesn't have that. We should do like a taste test. We should send it to you guys and do a basketball news taste that test. Well, it's funny. I saw your snacks. I saw your tweet the other day and like you were talking about like Canadian candy and it was like the coffee crisp and there was another one that I was like those look really good. So I arrow I'm curious. arrow it's arrow's useless but coffee crisp it's great. <laughs> I'm, I'm down. I think we should do fun. We should do coffee always crisp in America. No, no. Canadian. They don't no. have fuzzy peaches. They don't have ketchup chips. It's such a boring country. Like, what do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to expand to, our audience, Ima. <laughs> I want to it's a stupid country and no one's going to make Well, give uh, all of, Okay, I'm just going to send everybody a box of Joe Louis. I don't I have my ketchup I think, up to I think, like, I think they just want to here in like a limited run. I think I tried those, but the others I haven't. Okay, shout talk. out to Sidra because she's right. She's like, they don't even have health care. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> no. yeah. We will not. Please, oh, no. oh, Please no. follow Dishes and Dimes and subscribe <laughs> to us. We promise it's not going to be after. We don't slander every episode. <laughs> every once in a while. Um, can I just say, I just, I found this out not to turn this into a political thing, but Americans are allowed to vote. Like early ballot start, um, that lasts longer than Canadian elections. Like Canadian elections can't pass 50 days and Americans are allowed to vote 55 days out from the election. So that's just oh wild God. comparison between the two countries that I thought was so crazy. It blew my mind. Um, okay, so um, the next question, this is a basketball related question. Okay. So what year <laughs> did Toronto host its first ever NBA game? Oh God, I should know I think that. I might lose this one too, to be honest. I think this is a they- trick question. You said NBA game, not All Star game, right? You said NBA game, not All Star game. Okay. Um, yeah, the first basketball game in Toronto was held in what year? Oh man, I should know this. Uh, it's not like nineteen ninety. I mean, it's nineteen ninety eight. I don't know. 
1998. It was when Vince was drafted. So that's probably why that uh, did not expect him. It was a okay. person was the live girl. Um, 1998 was when Vince Carter was drafted. But I asked you a trick question um, because I don't know that a lot of people know this, but the first yeah. ever basketball game was played between the Toronto Huskies and the New York Knickerbockers in 1946 in Toronto. Oh, my God. I did not know that. It makes sense, though. It, that, they didn't have, before they had a team, they had yeah, they hosted games. That makes sense. That it was, was a trick Toronto question. Huskies, Toronto, you have a team. No, Toronto yeah. had a team. Toronto had a team. It was, it was called the Toronto Huskies. Right. So it wasn't, uh, yeah, they, it wasn't the Raptors. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Damn, I should have known that. Like BBA, so I kind of worded that weird. But, um, yeah, there you go. But 1995 uh, would have been the start of the Toronto Raptors. How did I okay. know that? That's pathetic. My birth year. Right. 98, 95. What's baby? Yeah, I was I was six years old, so that's my defense. <laughs> I was I was just born. It was I was negative one year. So Alex is a year older than me. I'm a year older than Yasmin. Yasmin's a year older than Nor. There we go. We're in oh my goodness. Are you a 94 baby or a 95 baby? You're nine Nor's 95, right? Yeah, she said 95. Yeah. And then you're 94. Okay. I'm 94 and Alex is 92. So it's just like, ah, it's a I one, I kind of ruined it. I did quick math, you guys. I did quick math. <laughs> um, okay, so um, this is about dishes and dimes. I don't know if you know this. We've mentioned it. Uh, this is the, the last question. question or... uh, not the last question, no. Uh, do you oh, know wow. how we came to be? Yes, I do know this. Okay. You guys were all super funny, amazing people on Raptors Twitter. And then someone, I don't know the Origin guy. Origin story. <laughs> I don't know the person's name, but they said, you guys should start a podcast. And then I believe Sandy was like, all right, let's do it. And then got you guys all together and created Dishes and Dimes. And oh, wasn't that March? Like, it wasn't that long ago. It was, no, it was literally November? like November. Yeah. Oh, wait. So I thought... in January of this year. Oh, okay. Okay. So wait, wait, when was your first like podcast? When did you guys have the first one? January, I think first was January 22nd. Okay. Yeah, so, so late January. January. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We yeah. haven't even had like when you when you think about it, we haven't had like a regular full season. season. Well, we like, were just halfway through the season, that. and then COVID was like, "Hi guys." Um, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, kind of a play on the earlier question. So you mentioned that you would pick. Um, we talked about basketball players. You said Jared Jeffries. <clears> you said the Morris twins. Um, you said Luka Doncic is your final answer, but <laughs> you had to pick from a dish. LeBron was really play. good. That's a great one. I'll, okay. I'll say Luka Let's just see, because, if you uh, think I'm not going to ask you to pick to team up with the dishes and dime sauce, but if you think we were all in the Hunger Games, who would you pick to come out? Oh man! Oh god! <laughs> huh? I feel like Iman. You would probably. I feel. I feel like you would. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm either dying early or I'm staying late. There's no one that's killing us all. <laughs> I think you would, she has you our would addresses defend, and we're done. I, I think you would befriend a lot of people. You would like be talking to everyone and like either befriend them and like you'd be there till the end or they would just be like, God, this girl doesn't shut up. And like, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you clearly played with me in Among Us apparently because that's my strategy there. Just talking to everyone until no. they get distracted and Assad is right don't pick Sidra she doesn't have any knees you're not gonna make it <laughs> She's, you're gonna have to be carrying yeah. her the whole time <laughs> I, think, I think my I think Iman is I think you would have like a lot of allies um but other than that let me think I don't know why but like Kelsey's kind of coming to mind too. Kelsey's a mom. Um, I was gonna say Kelsey's, Kelsey's a good one. one. Kelsey's a mom. I feel like she you could hold her own. She's resourceful. Like she could. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No offense to yeah. no offense to anyone else, but she, but she has a minivan. Like I trust her more than anybody else. <laughs> she can drive. Okay, so we came to our final question about dishes and dimes. Nor just mentioned best segue. Kelsey has a minivan, and if you Stop are Assad. Okay, that's not you have to drive in the Hunger Games. Um, no, you walk. <laughs> I'm reduced um, to that. Ten toes. So 50% of dishes and dimes do not have their driver's license. Yeah. And you name who the four Oh my god. A driver's license. Okay, okay. You're I gonna got out this. us just like that. I told you, Nora, this is our shtick now. Like uh, you can't learn how to drive anymore. Like it's a thing. You're okay. not allowed to learn. I'm always gonna have a chauffeur over on the go. For him. He's trying to guess yes. Oh, <laughs> I knew Nor doesn't. I know Sandy doesn't. Um, based on Sandy's comments in the past, um, Kelsey does because the minivan. Um, <laughs> we ruined it for him. We're sorry. I didn't hear. I didn't hear Yasmin's answer. I'm not. Uh, uh, let me see. Do you have one? I'm gonna guess no. <laughs> Do you? 
God, I look well, like a walker. Is four. that it? You gotta name your four first. Did you name four? Okay, okay. So Sandy, I'm gonna name who doesn't have it. Okay. Sandy, Nor, I'll go Yasmin, and then I don't know about you, Iman. I don't know. You got two phones. What do you got? Hmm. <laughs> she got two phones. Um, <laughs> I'll go Iman as my fourth. Is that right? That was very close. Uh, not correct. Yasmin has hers. Katie does not. Oh, no. <laughs> Whoa, that's actually scary that he was that accurate. That was very accurate. Yeah, that was this really is a dumb, This is like a dumb American question, but like, is that just a you guys thing or is that like a Canadian thing? It's, it's a, a Toronto thing. It's a, well, for Nor, it's completely different because Nor, get yours, girl. You don't live in Toronto. <laughs> Why are you exposing? <laughs> you, <laughs> you shouldn't have told us. <laughs> Nor needs a driver's license. But like, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a Canadian thing so much as like a Toronto thing. Like just like, okay. a but, like no one in New York thing. has a driver's yeah. license. No one right, right. Yeah. yeah. I can I can explain, but I'm gonna need a day. So I will <laughs> write an essay on this, and I'll let you know why I don't have my license yet. Thanks a lot, Ima. Now I have to explain myself to everyone. No, and not everyone really knows I live Nor. in Brampton. No, uh, yeah, we just <laughs> got her. She would have been on our side. Not yeah. Today. I just <laughs> missed it. I missed the slander by just like that much. Oh wow. No, you you need to release like a notes app apology to our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was. It's funny because remember we first joined on here. I was gonna ask like, okay, so I was literally gonna ask you guys like, which of you have your license? Because I was like, I think that's so funny that it's become like a, a running thing now. Um, but I'm glad I did it because it would have ruined this segment. So hashtag yeah. team passport to your club. To the club. <laughs> this isn't drive 2021. No, everyone <laughs> knows I live on a drive did not drive. Like there's a reason we use that. We pass the ball. We don't drive. There's no drive. <laughs> yeah, we don't drive. No, we it's Uber. Drives. We, we Uber. Uber. We got Kelsey. We Uber Listen, everywhere. We got Kelsey. We I'm got. You know, we're better for the environment. Our carbon footprint is lower. See, and now I feel oh, like cool. now I feel like I shouldn't get the license because I feel like now it's a, like a Yasmin said, it's a dimes and dimes joke. Your brand. Solidarity. But no one, no one, yeah, no one, tell me to get one. Just be ready to pick me up and drop me off. Nor's a princess. Oh my god. Yes, I love this. <laughs> We just made yeah, you a brand. I, I'm in Florida. So we like don't drive. Super far apart. I don't drive. Like, Uber everywhere. Pick me up or drop me off. I was gonna say, do you just do you just walk everywhere? Or do you Uber? No, no, I don't walk anywhere. I don't walk That's anywhere. So yeah. oh I have God. like I have like 20 people in my family, and so I just wait on someone to pick me up and drop me off. Or um, I have friends who live nearby, so they'll like chauffeur and stuff. Honestly, like it's a huge story why I don't have one. So mm. I will actually write an essay and I'll let you know why because I feel like now I owe everyone the We'll the, dedicate uh, an episode opening to it. Yeah, the I will cool. I will make a podcast on this actually. It'll be so a cold other, opening. No theme song. Just no like theme song, nothing. <laughs> and so that other people like me feel included. It's going to be like a it's YouTube perfect. video where you're like looking at the camera, you're like, I'm sorry. Just like apologizing. <laughs> It'll be your apology video. <laughs> and there's like tears coming out of my eyes like so. <laughs> I know with this platform, I promise I'll be better. And I've let you down. I'm no, sorry. Who did, did that? Who did that? <laughs> was that the last who's, question? Or... Who's going to lose their privileges today? Oh, Nor she's muted. I mean... Who muted me? Nor no, um, drive. I just Nor saw that. Oh, Iman was I muted. muted so, yeah. uh, and with that, we end our you know our episode. There you go. Nor doesn't drive. A message for for all the kids. That's what we leave you with. Why did I yeah, sign up for oh, this episode? Like, <laughs> That actually this wasn't is- as embarrassing as I thought it would be. So that wasn't too bad. <laughs> All right. This is great, Alex. You haven't heard my answer yet. Like, wait till you hear the notes up apology and the video where I'm crying. Then you'll see. Then you'll be like, why did we pick on her? Why did we change the, the nor doesn't drive? Yeah, the ticker. Do, do you guys uh, ever plan to get your license, or are you just like for life? Oh my god, it's like fire. So now I think I shouldn't. Now I think like that should be my brand. Brand. Yeah. yeah, just- yeah I was gonna say like. I can't walk anywhere here in Florida. Like I, I have to well, go everywhere. Florida, I a couple of years ago I went to uh the Disney World there and you cannot walk anywhere. It's like it's there horrible. it's it's very it's very non human friendly <laughs> that yeah. environment. Seriously. It's you have to drive, meant for people like to I drive walk. An, I drive an hour and a half to Magic Games, like le- legitimately. And like people are like, Oh, you can just go over to Miami. I'm like, Miami's like six hours from me. Like yeah. so spread out, it's crazy. But sorry. Just highways and grass and yep. like also like auto parking is crazy. Don't do it. Nobody needs a car. Who's spending all kind of crazy? Yeah, you guys you guys have gotten this far in life without it. Like, why do it now? I was just curious. Yeah. Wait, wait, Iman, you excluded your name from the ticker. Yeah, because I got to create the ticker. No, <laughs> she got to it first. Right. <laughs> wait, take your name out and put my name in. 
I'll, I'll get you next time, Iman. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, next time I'll host. Don't you worry. I'll take over. Thank you for joining us for our inaugural episode. Um, thank you for your time. And see us here next week at 7 o'clock. Bye, everyone. Bye. Au revoir. <laughs>